I'm going to go get ahead and get started. Um, and then our my co-presenter will hop on in. All right, so welcome to uh, our webinar, Top 5 Year-End Fundraising Strategies. My name uh, is Lisa Galbrin. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause, and we'll be joined with Josh Garcia, our Fundraising Development Specialist at Mighty Cause. Um, actually, if you give me one second, I'm just going to... All right, so uh, just a couple of uh, housekeeping things before we get started. Um, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, uh, please feel free to, um, uh, to put in questions in the Q&A tool. Um, that's the easiest way for questions to come up um, within uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, as well, this webinar is being recorded, um, and uh, if you, uh, so if you have any questions or anything about the webinar, a recording and the slide deck will be sent over to you guys in an email. Uh, so uh, for context, just about Mighty Cause, uh, we've been around since 2006. Uh, we're a year-round fundraising, a year, all year-round, all-in-one fundraising platform. Um, we are a platform that's designed for nonprofits to make the most of their fundraising efforts. Uh, so we offer a lot of different tools and services if you're new to non, uh, Mighty Cause, such as peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, integrations, donor uh, data management, fundraising analytics, etc. All right, so if you guys give me one second, um, uh, our my co-presenter, Josh, is just having still a little issues. So if you guys, I'm going to just help him get on. All right, so I'm going to continue and just go ahead and get started. Um, all right, so for today's agenda, what we will be going over are uh, a couple of things. So why is year-end giving so important? How to build a focused uh, year-end fundraising campaign? How to make giving easy and compelling? how to use the multi-channel uh, communication to boost your reach, and how to leverage Giving Tuesday and year-end. All right, so first, why is year-end giving so important? Well, um, so according to MNR Benchmarks in the 2004 report, um, Giving Tuesday uh, 2003 and December remain the strongest time in the year to drive direct cash accounting for 15% and 34% of one-time revenue. Meaning that this time of year, December and Giving Tuesday, so November, is the most important fundraising year for nonprofits. Um, so 10% of all annual donations come in the last three days of the year. So this is really your opportunity to meet your annual fundraising goals 
And more donors are giving during this time of the year because of tax deadlines, holiday spirit, year-end bonuses, et cetera. So again, it's an, it's an ample time to um, raise uh, funds. So as I just mentioned, tax benefits is definitely one of the reasons why a lot of donors are wanting to make their gifts right before the 31st um, for context. Oh, I see Josh is here. Hey everyone, sorry about that. Technical technical Zoom difficulties. Hey, yeah, no, all good. Um, I'm gonna, I'll let you go ahead and share. I just started off with the first slide. So let me just end my share and you can go ahead. No problem. So. And you can go back and introduce yourself. Since yeah, I will, I will also introduce myself. So apologies for a little bit of the confusion there, everyone. Um, my name is Josh Garcia. I am one of our uh, fundraising development specialists here at Mighty Cause. Um, I've been in this space, uh, the fundraising. Oh, I just realized my video is not on. Um, I've been in the uh, fundraising uh, software uh, space um, for the last uh, decade, um, working with organizations on their fundraising efforts, um, how to incorporate uh, different tools and software into that um, as well. There we go. There's my camera. Um, so we will be talking today about the, um, sorry, I'm just getting myself a little bit situated here. Uh, so we'll be talking about, uh, year-end fundraising, which is something that's, you know, really critically important here, um, for most of our nonprofits. Uh, it is the busiest time of the year when it comes to fundraising. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of tax benefits when we're focusing on year-end giving. Um, all donations that are on Mighty Cause are processed through Donor Advised Fund, which is uh, the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation. Um, what this allows us to do is for gifts to be automatically tax deductible and to have automated tax receipts. Um, this allows us to be able to also process to nonprofits all across the U.S. for anyone that is registered as a 501c3. Um, so our requirement is uh, organizations that are 501c3 eligible for it to be completely tax deductible. Um, if you do not have a 501c3 status, uh, you also can leverage a fiscal sponsor. So a fiscal sponsor is an organization that has a 501c3. Um, so the donations will be processed uh, through their EIN number registered with the IRS. Um, but you would be able to still receive those full donations, you know, set up your preferred bank account. Um, that is a little bit of the way that uh, this works when it comes to the tax portion of year-end giving. So we're going to be walking through a couple different tips here um, to focus on uh, when we're thinking about year-end giving. So the most important thing is having a focused campaign plan. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar um, with the concept of SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So when we're planning out our year-end fundraising, we want to think a little bit about, you know, what did we raise last year? What was our goal for how much we were going to raise this year? Set that number. Then start to think about other things. Is there anything else beyond from a financial number that we're going to be focusing on? Um, are we looking for a specific number of donors? Are we looking at our donors who are not retained um, who we want to be able to uh, pull back in for the current year. Um, take a look at last year's data to understand trends and what to expect uh, and set some of these smaller goals for your year-end campaign. Another big thing that we want to focus on is going to be uh, storytelling. So when I talk to nonprofits about you know, making their campaigns and their appeals, one of the big things that I want us to focus on uh, is going to be how we're going to share our mission and our work and how this ties to our nonprofits. Um, so focus on things like a project that you're all working on, um, a milestone, something that's going to be critically important for some of your work. Define your impact from the past year and your goals for the next year. So let's take a look back again as we think about what we've done this year. Think about the things that you've accomplished. Uh, who are lives that you've touched? Um, what are missions or projects that you were able to complete this past year? Um, you know, when you think about this is how much we've raised this year and this is what we've done with it, let's share some of that work. Um, sometimes people talk to me about, you know, other contexts outside of like more tangible things that we can, you know, do that as well. 
Is there a certain number of scholarships that we've been able to raise this year? Um, were we able to fund X amount of dollars towards research of a certain initiative? Uh, but help people understand uh, a bit of what the goals uh, that you're setting for the upcoming year and how this ties directly to individual giving. When you have an opportunity, uh, finding an example of like a, a hero, um, something that has directly been impacted by your work, that's a really great opportunity. Um, you know, I've worked with uh, animal rescues that might highlight um, one of the animals that was saved or adopted this year. I've worked with organizations that work in like uh, shelters for the unhoused who might um, highlight someone that who they've been able to impact. Again, this is going to change for everybody. Uh, but putting things in the more real life, real world context really helps our donors to be able to understand why their donations make an impact. Let's also start to think about some of the different ways that we're going to be able to create assets for us to be able to share. So we're going to want a multimedia approach. We're going to want to have not all of our eggs in one basket. What's most successful is having a combination of email communications, text communications, if you have the opportunity to do so, uh, still traditional mailed and direct mail um, uh, messaging, as well as social media. So let's start to compile things that we can help to, again, start to tell this story. This can be videos. Um, some ones that I've seen have been really successful. Uh, a video from like an executive director, um, maybe just kind of walking through the space or just making a direct message um, describing, uh, you know, how appreciative they are for the work of all their donors or maybe for their volunteers. Putting together images, um, you know, tying some of those appeals uh, to a powerful image, something that highlights your work. Um, infographics or numbers, anything that we can use to be able to share uh, some of the impact that you've been able to do. I'm a very numbers based person. So I think those sorts of like statistics um, are really important to me when I'm thinking about where I want to allocate my dollars as a donor. Uh, and Canva as um, an infographic templates uh, that is available and very commonly used by the nonprofits I've worked with. Uh, and then just general campaign co uh, content. So again, think about a theme, think about a story, something that's going to be able to carry our message uh, through roughly six weeks. We should plan to have our campaigns launching here in the middle of, uh, towards the middle end of November. So some common year-end giving campaign ideas, uh, holiday-themed fundraising appeals, um, an end-of-year match campaign. If you have you know, a donor, a foundation, or someone that is willing to match uh, a certain portion of donations, that's something that you can set up. Um, in the Mighty Cause camp, uh, software so that it is tracked. Uh, recurring giving drive. Um, if you've attended my webinars, you know that recurring giving is something that I preach very often, the importance of sustainable recurring giving. Um, so focusing on, uh, you know, if you're thinking about this is the work that we've done, this is how our recurring donations are able to make an impact from our donors, uh, become a sustainable uh, supporter to support us throughout the year. Maybe offer incentives, um, you know, something small, recognition, shout outs, maybe create like a unique name for your recurring gift givers, but something to make them feel a little bit special. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So encouraging board members, um, volunteers, uh, loyal donors, people who are already invested in your organization to create a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So peer to peer for those unfamiliar is when we are uh, having an individual sign up to fundraise on behalf of an organization, creating their own fundraiser. So you might have seen these very often, like through the Facebook fundraisers where someone might do that for their birthday. The benefit of using a peer to peer campaign, um, something that's off of the Facebook and more like a dedicated peer to peer campaign on Mighty Cause is that it isn't limited um, to just 24 hours for their birthday. Additionally, the nonprofit will get all of the donor information on those who are supporting them so they can thank them, send receipts, follow up with them, uh, and you'll be able to set up a direct deposit. People are three times more likely to make a donation if we're asked by someone they personally know, and there's no one better to tell your story than those groups of people, the board members, volunteers, and loyal donors who already have such a strong connection to you and your work. And then the last thing to think about here is donor recognition and stewardship. 
So we want to make sure that we're thanking our donors throughout. You know, thinking again, like when I mentioned having a video, um, thanking our donors, maybe specific emails that are going out just as general thank yous and recognitions. Personalized thank you notes when possible, particularly for donations of a certain size, can be really impactful. So let's create a timeline. As I mentioned, we really should be launching this in November. The giving season, the year-end giving season, uh, really kicks off on Giving Tuesday, which is the last Tuesday of November. And we don't want to wait till Giving Tuesday to first start reaching out to our donors. We should be here in November starting to prime them. I'm already starting to see messages from donors talking or from nonprofits talking about Giving Tuesday coming up later this year, talking about some of their year-end campaigns and some of the things they're, they're going to be working on. So here in November through December 6th, we really should be focusing on sell, telling our story and focusing on Giving Tuesday. December 9th through December 17th, we want to keep people engaged. So we don't need to hit them up immediately for another giving uh, at, or you know ask right after Giving Tuesday. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the impact of the gift. We're going to help people understand what those donations are going towards, how much we raise how we're gonna use those dollars. What sort of individuals or, uh, or you know programs and things were impacted by that? Those shout outs and thank yous that I mentioned. Posting on social media and letting them know that there's gonna be another push here towards the end of the year, uh, try to make it exciting. And that's where we come into phase three. So the end is going to be a big push. So, if you think about this kind of like the race, this is kind of where we start. This is where we're starting to get ourselves prepared for the final push. Phase three is going to be the final push. About 30% of all donations in a calendar year occur in the month of December alone. And I think the most interesting statistic is that December 30th and December 31st are going to account for 10% of all donations in the, in the year. So 10% of the donations in 2024 are going to happen in the last 48 hours of the year. So we really do want to make sure that at the end, we are really making that big push. We're going to focus. Don't be afraid to ask at this point a little bit too much. We're going to have multiple asks. We're going to continue to tell our stories. We're going to continue to say thank you. We're going to be active on social media. We're going to be active in our emails. And we're going to have that big final push to get us towards our goal. Sharing with your donors what a goal is will help create a little bit of that sense of urgency for them to follow along with you. So that is the uh, first thing that I wanted to highlight here. I wanted to take a quick pause uh, for any questions. Um, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind just reading out if there are any questions in the chat. So far, I don't see any questions for now. So I think we're good. No problem. I will be pausing throughout. So if you all have any questions, the chat is the best place to, uh, to drop those. So now we're going to focus on making giving easy and compelling. So number one, your website is going to be the first place that people are going to look. There's a couple things that we want to focus on them here. About 60% of donations over the course of a year are going to occur online. And about 28% of all donations are going to occur from mobile phones. So we want to make sure that our website is optimized, that it is straightforward, uh, that we can clearly see where we can leverage uh, a donate button. We want it to be able to adapt to someone's phone. And we want to make it very simple, the process. Think about when you're online shopping. The more steps and hurdles and things that you have to do to complete the process to purchase an item, you're less likely to see that through. We want it to be streamlined and simple. Another thing that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to have a form that lives on our website. Embeddable donation forms are shown to convert more visitors uh, to donors and more donors to recurring donors than taking them to a third-party platform like a PayPal or a Squarespace. Also, very critically, it's going to allow us to be able to gather and collect all the donor data that we need to use to follow up with donor engagement. So I'm going to show you a quick example here. 
This is one of our nonprofits. This is Dylan's Wings of Change. This is their homepage. When I click on this donate icon, as you can see, very obvious. I don't have to look around to try and find where the donate is. Quick call to action. I will click and their donation page is here. Now this is a Mighty Cause donation page, but I'm not being redirected to Mighty Cause's website. I'm staying on Dylan Wings of Change's page. So as I mentioned, this is really critical. It helps people to be able to uh, have a little bit more trust, more confidence in the organization. It allows the nonprofit to be able to share their messaging and control their messaging. And this leads to higher conversion rates. You'll see on this website page, donate today. Again, quick call to action. A little bit more of information here. So someone that might've been directed here, maybe they're researching nonprofits uh, within the same sort of genre or uh, field as Dylan's Wings of Change. If they wanted any more information, I don't have to leave to go look around on the website. I don't have to go and search online, which is gonna make it less likely that I come back and complete the donation. I have information right here about their mission. Preset amounts for people to choose from. And consider leveraging this, which is an impact statement. An idea of what a donation will help accomplish. $50 is the equivalent of funding a student to attend their workshop. So I have, as a donor, a real life tangible idea of what a donation can help accomplish. Suggested amounts paired with recurring or with uh, impact statements are statistically shown to lead to higher donation amounts than if we just have a choose your own amount as our only option. Additionally, this helps for monthly donations. You know, maybe I can't make a one-time $500 donation to train a wingman trainer for the school district, but I can make $50 a month. And now I know that every year my donations will train at least one uh, trainer for a school district. I have an understanding of that impact that I made as a donor. Custom questions. So anything you'd like to learn about your donors? How'd you hear about us? Are you interested in volunteer opportunities? Is there a designation or program you'd like your donation to go towards? Um, here, they're using it to identify people that are interested in starting a program or booking a workshop. Multiple payment methods, credit card, PayPal, Venmo, Google Pay, bank account, as well as Apple Pay. More payment options will allow people to be able to uh, more likely complete the donation, but also more likely to sign up for a recurring giving if they know they can use the preferred amount. And then we always ask donors to cover the fees on your behalf. And I mentioned gathering our data. If we go to our donation page or to um, our Mighty Cause account here, all the donor data is going to be captured here on the back end. So this allows me to be able to make easy tracking of my donors for follow-up and future donor engagement. So again, walking through the embeddable form, our different donation tiers. Now, this is one of the things that I mentioned before when we're thinking about recurring donations, some of those distinct names, you know, little things that can give recognition. $1,000 a month are superstar donors, $100 a month are our champions, and our monthly newsletter shouting out people who just signed up for those. End of a year newsletter, recognizing all of our heroes, ambassadors, champions, and superstars. This is the kind of messaging that we can incorporate into our year-end campaigns when we're thinking about how we can better drive recurring giving. Another thing that I'd like to note, you have the option to also make monthly donation as your default option. And that is often considered a best practice. People will still be able to click over to that one-time donation, but leading off with the suggestion of a monthly donation, uh, just immediately plants that in the mind of a donor, the importance of that recurring giving. And you saw on the Dylan's Wings of Change page, you see here, 
This spreads your contribution, provides stable and continuous support for our programs, giving again a little bit of context on the importance of that monthly donation. After we complete the donation, or after we complete our year end, we should be thinking about a year end report, as I mentioned. So, an impact report is a nonprofit uh, report that showcases the results, outcomes, and overall impact of your nonprofit's initiatives. So you see here, we have an example, you know, highlighting some of the projects, details, outcomes, how much they've raised, acknowledgements. It also provides a lot of insight for your donors. It provides a lot of transparency. It shows the work that you're doing. It shows that how you're looking to continue to grow. And it helps keep donors engaged. So this is a great opportunity for content for follow-up communications when we're preparing this year end impact report. As I mentioned, we don't want all of our messages just to be appeals. We should have a healthy mix of thank yous. And this is an example of storytelling, helping people get that sort of real life context on how we can build out or how our donations are making an impact. As I mentioned, Canva is a great resource for nonprofits. Uh, they have free templates available for you to be able to build out impact reports like this. This example is one that was built through a Canva uh, template. Wanted to pause here to see if there were any questions um, about what we just walked through in regards to the embeddable donation forms um, or impact reports. see any so far so i think we are good to go perfect now i alluded to this earlier our tip number three is using a multi-channel communication to boost our reach so we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket we want to make sure that we are reaching out to donors across different channels i worked under a, a um, certified fundraising executive uh, years ago a uh, brilliant fundraiser. And she said something that always stuck uh, uh, with me, which is that fundraising boils down to knowing who our donors are, how they like to give, what motivates them to give, and how they like to be communicated to so that we can get them the right message through the right channel. If we can do that, if we can connect with our donors through their preferred channels, and understand or help them understand the impact of our work. And then, as I mentioned before, make it easy to donate. That's all fundraising comes down to. So let's think about some talking points when we're messaging with our donors. Classic storytelling arc. Challenge, solution, impact, call to action. Uh, an example. Um, there, let's say that we're an animal, uh, shelter. There are, uh, X amount of animals, um, that were, uh, are given up for adoption last year. Our organization is working to be able, uh, to do so through X, Y, and Z channels. As a result, this past year, we were able to find new homes for X amount of animals. Thanks to donors like yourself. Click here to donate today to make our work possible again in the upcoming year. Pretty simple uh, uh, storytelling arc there. Thinking about befores and afters. So this is also going back to the impact report. You know, helping people understand, you know, what was the narrative of our past year? Where were we in January of 2024? Where do we stand as we head into year end? What do we need to do to be prepared for January 2025? And showing the donors that they make a difference. One of the things that I always say is that donors like to think that they are the ones making an impact. And your organization is merely the vehicle through which they are making that impact. When you say, um, as I going back to the Dylan's Wings of Change, $50 uh, funds a student to attend one of our workshops. If I make a $50 a month gift, as the donor, that perspective is, 
I funded 12 students to be able to attend uh, a workshop this year. So that's where having them understand the impact of the gift and how that ties to their donation is really critical when donors are thinking about where they're going to allocate their charitable donations. So another example, your $25 donation transformed a child's school year by providing them with a brand new backpack. With the help of our donors this year, we were able to provide a thousand backpacks to students in need. A donation of just $25 a month would mean that every month your donation would make another uh, student's year by providing them with a new backpack that they sorely need. Click here to donate today. Thinking about the long term, so as I mentioned, looking at the impact report, not only tying it to back to what we did this past year, but also thinking about where we're going to be in 2025. You know, this year, you were able to provide over a thousand backpacks to students in need. As we head into 2025, there's going to be a number of challenges that we anticipate our community facing, and our work is needed now more than ever. We're hoping to be able to provide at least 1,500 backpacks to students next year. We expect the, uh, uh, the need to grow, and we rely on donors like yourself. Would you consider a $25 a month donation? And then just any other additional information that you think might be helpful. Um, information about yourself, your work, make it personal. You know, share some of the people that are in your organization. Highlight some of your volunteers. Highlight some of your staff. Highlight some of your board members. Make a real human connection with your donors and help them differentiate uh, you and the work that you do in your organization uh, from the other organizations that are out there. Because of you is clear, strong language that helps connect donors. So you saw there was a lot of that mention on that Dylan's Wings of Change page that I was showing you. A lot of mentioning the importance of sustainable giving from supporters, thanking their donors. That's the sort of thing that we want to be able to really focus on. We really need to make it clear to our donors that our work is made possible by them. Because of you, we were able to provide $10,000 uh, or 10,000 backpacks to students in need. Can we count on you to give blank amount to support our efforts next year? And one of the things that we're going to want to do is not necessarily just make a blanket appeal in terms of that amount. We should make more specific requests. We can come into, if you have a CRM, we can look at our donations. We could identify everyone who gave this past year. Let's say we're thinking about $25 a month. $25 a month is $300 over the course of the year. So let's look at everybody who gave between $150 and $300. And now we can make specific requests to those individuals. Clayton, thank you so much for your gift of $200. Your donation was able to help us provide X amount of backpacks to students in need. Our work is needed now or more than ever in the upcoming year, and we rely on donors like yourself to make this possible. A gift of $25 a month would provide a student with a backpack every single month. Click here to donate today. So let's be strategic with the sorts of asks that we're uh, making of our donors for how much. We shouldn't be sending out blanket appeals, and we should be relying on a lot of that because of you and impact type of language. have a specific call to action. So this should be both on your website, the donation widget. It should be in your uh, messaging. If it's a direct mail, if it's an email, um, if you are sending out a text message, it should be very specific. That call to action is what are we asking donors to do? So when we're thinking about emails, most of those call to actions are gonna be hyperlink buttons that are gonna take us to our donation page. We should think about the color and placement of those buttons. Again, when we were thinking about the Dylan's Wings of Change uh, on their website, the call to action, donate today right there at the top of the page. It's very easy to see. It's one of the first things that I see. So that's something that we should be thinking about. You know, look at some of your past emails, look at some of your past appeals, look at your website and see, is it very clear and apparent where I can make a donation? 
or do I as a, a reader or viewer have to scroll around and search? Now, this is something that I'd like to highlight. We actually have a, a year-end fundraising toolkit. Uh, this is a free resource that you can find um, on Mighty, Cause, or Mighty Causes site. Um, we have free email templates that you'll be able to use. Uh, they're a really great resource when you're thinking about sorts of messaging. So here's an example of one. As the year draws to a close, we here at Mighty Cause have been reflecting on everything our organization has been able to do this year. Because of donors like you, this year, we were able to insert a list of all the things that Mighty Cause has done, include images or an infographic, a little bit more about what we were able to. We can't do any of this without your support and to continue helping our community in the new year. We are asking you to make a donation now for $25 to invest in Mighty Cause's work to support nonprofits. Time is running out. Make your tax deductible donation by midnight to December 31st to help us do even more for our nonprofits in the year ahead. Donate now. This is going to be a hyperlink. It's going to take us to the donation page. So this is a great example of what we just walked through. It has a lot of because of you mentioned or language. It has a clear call to action. It is asking for a specific amount. We are creating a sense of urgency with uh, the year end. We are uh, talking about both what we accomplished this past year, but also looking to the year ahead. And then that call to action is going to have an, uh, a link that is going to take us to our donation form. This is a great example of a year-end email template. When we were thinking about the different phases uh, earlier, this is gonna be a phase three email. This is a great email to uh, uh, take place somewhere in between December 18th and December 31st. As I mentioned, email segmentation. Segmentation means taking our whole email list and splitting it into smaller groups based on behavior, profile, and interests. And then we're going to tailor our communication to different segments of donors. So here are some examples of some common ones. Major donors. So what is a major donor? That's entirely up to you. But take a look at your donors. See who's given in what ranges. And maybe identify who are those largest donors that we're really reliant upon. Let's identify people that are recurring donors and thank them for their gift and have a little bit more specific communications. Those one-time donors, you know, pulling up someone who made a one-time $200 donation, thanking them for that donation, giving them a little bit of context on its impact, asking for a specific amount. Frequent small donors, you know, maybe four people that are making a $10 donation here and there over the course of the year. I mean, helping them to understand an impact of maybe just signing up for a recurring gift. And then flagging our unretained donors as well. There's a number of ways that we can use this in a CRM. Number one, thinking about those uh, retained donors. Most CRMs are going to make it very simple for us to come in here and identify our not retained donors. So this is everybody that donated in 2023, but hasn't donated in 2024. So you see in this example, that's 258 people and over $88,000 that's being left on the table by not re-engaging those. The likelihood of someone going from a retained donor in one year uh, to a not retained donor and then coming back is almost non-existent. So it's really critical that we engage these individuals and that we have a way to be able to reach out to them directly. We actually have in the Mighty Cause plan an automated email that will go out to everyone who's coming up on the one year anniversary of their last gift with an email template that you can use. So that's an automated email that will track you or that will cover you for reaching out to unretained donors. Or looking in the back end of your system, being able to create some of those custom tags. So being able to identify, hey, these are my major donors. These are the people that we're going to want to reach out to directly. In Mighty Cause, we can message them directly. Or we can also use through our integrations with MailChimp. Having our data flow over to MailChimp so that we can message them directly. But these are some examples of that type of strategic segmentation 
What this is going to allow us to do is make sure that we're getting our message out to the right people. Again, what I was mentioning before, having the right message to the right people through the right channels, that's going to make a big difference when we're thinking about uh, the year-end pushes. Donors are getting a lot of different messaging from different nonprofits. Donor retention, as I mentioned, this is one of the biggest things that I've always preached uh, when I talk about nonprofits. It costs less to retain an existing donor than to require uh, acquire a new one. It is actually 10 times more cost effective to retain a donor than to find a new one to take its place. This is also very important when we're thinking about predictable and sustainable funding. When you're thinking about grants, one of the things that are going to be asked of you is your, uh, your sustainable funding. Having a large and reliable uh, recurring donor base is going to be something that's going to be really important. And the better that we engage our donors and retain them, this is going to be al allowing us to be able to build our relationships with them. Donor stewardship is a relationship. Major donors aren't born overnight. It's through engagement, through relationship building, through finding volunteers and ambassadors and board members, finding different ways to continue to strengthen our ties. So I mentioned to you the uh, retention report. So Mighty Cause has a built-in donor retention report. Um, if you have a CRM, make sure uh, to see if it does have an easy to view retention report. As I mentioned, Mighty Cause also has automated emails that will allow you to be able to have an email that goes out directly to anyone coming up on a year since their last donation. When we're thinking about those donor retentions, as I mentioned, we have a template built into our automated emails. You're going to want to think about the impact of their gift. Josh, thank you so much for your gift. Uh, $50 on December 10th of last year. Your donation helped provide 10 school lunch meals to children in need this past year. Because of donors like you, we were able to provide over 10,000 lunch meals uh, to students in need. A donation of $25 a month would allow us to be able to provide uh, X amount of uh, meals to students over the course of the year. Would you consider a donation? Donate button at the bottom with an, uh, bringing us to an embedded form. In our phase three, this is something we'll be sending out the slide. So this is something to consider um, for a year end schedule. General blast email to everybody with an impact statement. 27th, having something that is going to be specific for uh, goals for the next year. 29th, an email or message from someone, executive director, president or, board, or chair of the board, uh, thanking you for your support making that sort of per, uh, connection. December 30th, impact report. December 31st, that segmented targeted email with a specific ask to different groups. What I want you to see here is that it is a mix of both asks, thank yous, and storytelling. As I mentioned, Mighty Cause has an integration with MailChimp that will allow you to be able to sync your contacts automatically. This makes segmentation very easy. Um, also automates a lot of the, the manual work that comes along with that. Um, we also have a connection with Zapier that will connect you to constant contact. Um, we should consider as an organization, you know, finding tools like a MailChimp or a constant contact that are going to allow us to be able uh, to have that sort of, you know, taking our segmentation and then having more targeted messaging. I've been alluding to social media throughout as well. So that's something that's also very critically important. Um, have a plan. The next two weeks, we really should be making a plan for how much we're going to be reaching out to our donors. Aim for two to three updates uh, per week. And that should be following up. They should be following up with that now. Stick to platforms that you've used before. So if you've seen that you have a good following on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, wherever that might be, Let's stick to where we know our audience is and where we're reliable or where we have reliable engagement.
let's leverage some of our visuals. So videos, testimonials, impacts, messaging from our volunteers, from our staff, from our board. These are things that are going to help boost in our engagement. And you can also check out Instagram and face, uh, Facebook post boosts. You don't need to spend a huge amount to see benefits of those, but $20 to $100 can ensure that your content is seen. Wanted to pause again. Uh, Lisa, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, there's just one question I see that came up, which is how many emails do you recommend we send in the last two weeks? Um, so yeah, you saw the just the example of the email schedule. I think you're going to probably do more at the last week, again, especially with that De December, December 31st deadline. But I would say probably two weeks before you can do like two to two to three. Um, I would but, say about two to three. I would say in the month of December, we should think about two to three emails over the course of the week. And again, going back to our um, original slide about the different phases, uh, we want to break this up. The beginning phase is going to be a push towards Giving Tuesday. The second phase, um, that little bit of a, a lull in the middle, December 7th through de uh, December 18th, you know, just two emails sharing the impact of your Giving Tuesday, thanking people for it. We don't need to have an appeal necessarily at that point. We can include a call to action with a hyperlink to our donate button on our emails. We should always include those. But this is going to be an appeal email. It's going to be more of a general messaging. And then we're really going to ramp it up here towards the end, especially that final week is where we're going to be really, we're going to think about it as a big final push. We want to make uh, sure that people are seeing our messaging, that we're on social media as well. And then we'll taper off in the new year with a follow-up, letting people know how we uh, uh, how we finish towards our goals. Uh, matching grants. So a matching grant is a fundraising tool uh, that is used as a donation incentive. So matching grants are typically provided by a donor um, or by uh, maybe a foundation, someone who's going to match a specific amount of donations during a specific period of time. They're really a marketing tool that helps motivate donors to give immediately. It gives donors the opportunity to make their donations, but also understand that their donations are going to go further. You see here just some calls to action. Want to double your donation to KMFA? Help us raise $20,000 before 6 p.m. today to unlock an all or nothing $20,000 matching grant. So there's a number of different types. It could be a one to one. So this is the most common. This is just dollars are matched dollar for dollar. So this might be in the next 24 hours, they're going to match every uh, donation, or maybe it's up to a certain amount. A donor is uh, a donor is pledged to uh, donate. A not uh, organization is pledged to match uh, up to the first five thousand dollars. You can also do a percentage match, so that'll be a portion of each donation that's matched, or some sort of cumulative threshold based on the quantity of donations, number of donors, etc. So we can actually do this in the Mighty Cause platform under our fundraising tools. I can go to matching grants you'll see that we are tracking these matching grants live here. We can also track our past as well to create one. I will simply click create. We can either put the name of the sponsor or again, we can hide it if they want to remain anonymous. The value of the match. Any other you know specific limitations? Is it going to be for a certain period of time? Or maybe we take that off. Are we going to uh, have it for a certain percentage um, that uh, dollar for dollar or some of those cumulative groups? You'll see here on the Mighty Cause page, it highlights for us two matches are live. So our donors know about these matches. This helps build urgency, creating a dedicated match for the last week or day of the year. Make sure to include information about this and any appeals that you're sending out and any impact that was made by previous matching gifts. How we can do so is we should, one, prospect, identify people, major gift givers, board members, etc. Number two, let's reach out. 
So as I mentioned, this is the ben this is why it's important to retain and steward our donors year over year. This is what's going to allow us to be able to build up that sort of personal connection that's going to allow us to be able to reach out. And the most important thing is to just make the ask. We can't receive that unless we uh, reach out and ask. So identify those individuals that you have a strong relationship with. Let's promote our matching grant. This is another example of one of our templates that you can be found in our um, on our year-end fundraising toolkit. You also, again, will have the slides sent out to you after the fact. And then five, let's leverage that Giving Tuesday and year-end momentum. So Giving Tuesday this year is December 3rd. Uh, the context around Giving Tuesday is that it's typically the last Tuesday of November, um, but this year, because of Thanksgiving, it's going to fall into uh, uh, being the last week. It's going to fall on December 3rd. Essentially, we can think of it as a uh, charitable equivalent to like uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Um, so it's billed as a day to do good around the year. It's an international day of giving. It's one of the highest volume days for charitable giving in the United States. And the real big thing here is it's what's considered the kickoff for year end fundraising. Um, so this is a really great way to engage your donors. This is a really great way to start to build your year end messaging. Uh, giving Tuesday, again, December 3rd. Early giving begins on November 19th through Mighty Cause. It is free to register. Um, we'll be having a 27 hour marathon. Um, begins uh, midnight Eastern and ends midnight Pacific. Uh, we have a number of tools online. You can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Uh, we have resources, trainings, um, support. We have a number of different toolkits and templates. Um, if you're also looking to leverage any of the Mighty Cause uh, subscription tools, you can also reach out for a demonstration as well. Make sure to build your end uh, or Giving Tuesday into your end strategy. Uh, November messaging should be mostly around Giving Tuesday. So we want to use this as a launch pad for our year end campaign when we're thinking about that phase one of the three different phases of year end. Uh, phase one, our messaging should be starting um, by the second or the second to last week of November. So November 21st is when we should, uh, at the latest, um, start to our year end messaging and we should be focusing on uh, Giving Tuesday. And this is going to kick off that sort of messaging that carries through year end. Develop a plan, develop a schedule and think about those different phases. Think about our different messaging. Think about the different channels that we're going to want to approach uh, our donors on. Having a plan is going to ensure that you can have consistent messaging and calls to action through all, all your platforms throughout the end of the year. Leverage matching gifts for added motivation. Share real-time progress and updates. Um, you'll notice on the Mighty Cause page, you'll be able to set up so that people can see how much you've raised towards your goal. So set a goal and then regularly update your donors. Um, on Giving Tuesday, you know, have a, a message during the middle of the day, maybe at five o'clock as well. Hey, this is where we are towards our goal today. Uh, keep up the momentum. Um, click here to donate if you haven't already. And then after Giving Tuesday and throughout year end, make sure that we are thanking our donors, sharing their impact, and helping them understand that their work, our work is made possible by them. I mentioned our year end fundraising toolkit. This is a free resource. You can access it here on mightycause.com. It includes a year end checklist. Email templates, an ebook, donor retention tips, email best practices, social media planning. It's so really everything that you need is going to be in one spot. This is written by our fundraising specialist. And this is something that I think is going to be really helpful. Um, it is a free resource that you can use. We are going to have another webinar on Thursday, November 14th. Last minute tips for Giving Tuesday. Um, you can register on mightycause.com slash webinars. Again, if you can't attend, but you register, you'll be able to get a recording in the slides. Um, it really will be a bit last minute. As I mentioned, we should have some of our messaging going out by November 21st. Um, so I really recommend everyone uh, download the free kit, start to take a look, start to discuss with your team and your board um, about developing a plan for your messaging and communications. Start to segment your donors, start to pull together data for your year-end impact reports. And if any of you would like a demonstration of the Mighty Cause platform, you can find it through our website. We'll also be sending out a survey after this webinar. Um, and one of our fundraising specialists can walk you through our different tools and see if it's something that might be a fit for you. We had two questions come in. Sure. Uh, 
So uh, one of them is we participate in Give Miami Day, which is um, a giving day that we are the technology provider for. Um, do you recommend, um, it takes place on November 21st, so do you recommend additional campaign asks? We want to avoid donor fatigue. Yep, so that is a great question. Um, so if you are someone that is going to be using uh, like a, a giving day, an upcoming giving day that's going to be near Giving Tuesday, that is also a good opportunity to kind of use that instead as your launch point. Um, you don't have to completely ignore Giving Tuesday, but you might want to focus maybe some of that uh, efforts on one or the other. So if you're somebody that's a participant in Give Miami Day um, or another uh, Giving Day, um, we can use that as our launch point for year end. Uh, have a lot of our messaging, all the same sorts of tactics um, that we were talking about today um, that we would use for Giving Tuesday. We can apply those to Give Miami Day. Then after Give Miami Day, you're going to want to do the same things that we talked about. Um, for phase two, we're going to want to talk about how much we raised, uh, what it's going to go towards. We're going to thank our donors, help them understand their impact and appreciation on Giving Tuesday. Doesn't hurt to still have a small ask, but this is going to be a little bit more of a lighter knock. I'm um, just letting, reminding people that Giving Tuesday is today, International Day of Giving, if you'd like to make a donation. But in that sort of instance, we might focus on making our uh, you know launch of year end, Give Miami Day rather than Giving Tuesday. So something to consider um, if you're a participant in an upcoming giving day. Yeah, I also think it's helpful. I We talk about this in our webinars all the time. I think that's why the goal setting is so important because when you have an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish by the end of the year and then what you're trying to accomplish next year, that makes your ask so much more clear because you know what you're trying to reach, that goal. Um, another question is, can you uh, link matching grants to a fundraising campaign or can you attach matching grants to a fundraising campaign? Yeah, so you can make the uh, the, the matching grants on Mighty Cause um, to a specific campaign. So that's really common for like people who will create a Giving Tuesday campaign or a year-end campaign or a Give Miami Day campaign. Um, they'll leverage those matching grants um, and it'll be associated with the campaign. Also, you'll be able to track that information in the back end of the system. I don't see any more questions. So I guess we can end it there on time. Um, as Josh mentioned, there's going to be a survey that comes afterwards. Um, if there are any other topics you want covered, um, please let us know if you want to talk to one of our fundraising specialists about any of the tools we have. Again, please let us know on the survey. Um, we're also always here. I'll put our support email as well, support at mightycause.com. Um, and this webinar, again, as a reminder, we'll send the recording and the slide deck uh, in the follow-up email. So I'm so happy to see a lot of people said that this webinar was informative and helpful. So that's so great to hear. And uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Appreciate everyone's time. Have a good one. Bye.